Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript and today we're going to be talking about functions. Now what if you have a piece of code and you want to be able to control when it executes? Well what you can do is put it inside a function. So let's figure out how you go about doing that. Now a rule of thumb when creating functions it's always best to create them within your header tags to make sure that they're always read before anything else within your body tags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these pair of script tags and create them within my header tags. Now let's create a function. So in order to do this, type in the word function followed by the name of the function, I'll just call it sample, followed by parentheses, opening curly brace and closing curly brace. And as you could have guessed, your piece of code goes within, within these curly braces. Let's create a piece of dummy code first before we go on. So I'll type in document writes, and I'll have it write, hello world, and I'll save that, and when I refresh the page, there's our hello world. Well, what if we put this piece of code inside our function, so I'll cut and paste, that's control X and control V, I'll click save, and I'll refresh the page. Now it's not there, and the reason why it's not there is because we have not done what is called calling the function. So let's figure out how to call a function. It's very easy. All you do is write out the name of the function followed by a pair of empty parentheses like this. Sample parentheses then your generic semicolon. I click save and now when I refresh the page now our hello world is back. And the reason is because when it reads this it's saying oh look for a function called sample which is up here. Now do whatever is inside, and it does. Now the next thing I would like to talk about is variables and variable scope. So let's let's create a variable out here called x, and I'll set it equal to 5. And maybe I want x to be printed in the function. So I'll click save, and I'll refresh the page. Well there's our 5, and the reason for this is because when you create a variable outside of a function it has global scope which means it can be seen anywhere in the program even in other script tags as you can see but let's try reversing it so I'll, cop I'll cut this and paste it in here then I'll cut this and I'll paste it here so now it's, now it's the opposite and you know what I should probably make sure it's after the function so you can see that the function is read first thus setting x equal to 5 first before it tries writing it so I'll save and when I refresh the page and now it's gone and that's because when you create a variable inside of a function it has not global scope but local scope and it can only be read inside the function of which it was created it cannot be seen anywhere else and uh, that's about it for uh, variable scope so, what if you want to create a variable outside of the function, and whatever piece of data it is, you want to use it inside your function? So, let's start by uh, creating a variable called, I don't know, 1, and set that equal to, let's make it whatever the user types in. So, I'll create a prompt box, and it'll say, type in a number here and I'll set the default value to zero. Now when you create a variable or when you uh, type in a number in a prompt box it's taken in as a string so now we're gonna have to convert it. So I'll go I'll create a variable called conversion one I guess equals then we're gonna use two excuse me parse int and then the name of the variable that we want to convert which is the one variable now what if we so now this um, conversion one is now going to be our number converted into an integer instead of a string well, what if we want to pass this number into our function in order to do this we have to create a parameter so I'll copy this and all you do is just paste it within your parentheses now when you create a variable here you're then going to have to create a corresponding variable in here. And I'm just going to use a generic term 
do not type in var, otherwise that's going to be its own thing. You don't want to do that. I'll just type in a. So now when the function's read, that value a will then become the value of conversion 1, which in this case is the value of 1 that we typed in, which is with a string converted into an integer. And maybe I want to write out that a, so I'll just, I'll just cut this. And I'll paste it here, and I should probably get rid of this. And I only want to print the A. So I'll click Save, and when I refresh the page, I'll type in, let's say, 345. Now the, word, now the number 345 appeared. Now what if we want to pass in 2? Well, then you just create another, var another variable. So I'll copy this and paste it and this will be our variable number two and we'll have to convert that into a number as well since we're dealing with numbers you don't have to do this of course if you're working the strings and we'll want to change that to a two and conversion to now in order to create a second parameter just type in whoops, a comma followed by the other variable name that you would like to pass. So I'll click copy and paste. Then of course you have to create a second variable up here. Do not declare it, just type in the name. And remember it has to be in this order. If I made this B and this A, then B would be conversion 1 and A would be conversion 2. So make sure you, make, make sure you have the order correct here. So I'm going to want to break this to the next line so I'll make uh, a break tag in here and I want it to print the other number as well so letter B so I'll click save and I'll make sure I have all this right and I believe I do so I'll click save and it should print both numbers that we type so 235 and 375 and there are our two numbers printed now what if you want to do some math to the numbers that you put in here and whatever math that you do, it'll uh, you have to create a variable in here, and you want to use that result, that new variable. Well, since it has local scope, you can't access it, right? Wrong. You actually can. And this is how you go about doing it. So, first of all, let's get rid of both of these and create a new variable. I'll call it var total, and I'll set that equal to a plus b. Now, in, now, in order to access this total, what you're going to have to do is make another variable out here as well. So I'll call it var final. Whoops. And I'll set this variable equal to the, uh, the calling of this function. Now, this function itself does not have a value, so you're going to have to return a value. So what I can do is return the value of total and what this does is it will then make this variable here final equal to the value of total and don't forget your two variables that you pass in as well and I'll probably want to write it as well so document dot write and I'll want to write out final not not total final so I'll click save and I'll refresh the page and what number should I type in? 250 and 350? That should come out to 600, right? And there's our 600. So it did the math. Uh, and that's, uh, that's functions for you. That's parameters and variable scope. So I hope this tutorial was uh, easy for you. And it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I hope this uh, worked out for you. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.